Someone close to me, treasure, my assistant, reminded me that I talk about therapy a lot and she says, why not actually write or make a video about the lessons you've learned from your therapy? So I'm like, hmm, that's a good idea, right? Because, I mean, I'm not ashamed to say I get, I get therapy and this has really helped to just like help me maintain balance in my life and in my mind and in my with my emotions as well and i think and i encourage it um in fact i encourage any form of self-care for some people it could be journaling um and self-therapizing for some other people it could be community for some people it could actually be speaking to someone who is a professional who won't judge them that just gives them a safe space for most of some other people it's you know people have different ways and whatever it is that you need to do i think it's important because to live the kind of life that you deserve to live the kind of life that you want to live um you need to take care of every path of you right because like i said in one of my my very first newsletter for we still learning was that like, growth is multi-dimensional it's about everything it's about your work as much as it's about your relationship as much as it is about your mental and uh, emotional stability uh, as much as it is about your physical health as well so you need to pay attention to all of those things and however you want to pay attention to them that's up to you but just do them and for me one of the ways that I just help with my emotions and my mind is just speaking to someone every other week um, and I've done that for a while yeah so in this video I want to share lessons I've learned from therapy <laughs> um, and I think these lessons are very they're very relatable, right? Um, I've learned them in the process of, you know, having conversations with my therapist and my life coach, um, two different people. Uh, but I think, but I, I've, whenever these things come up in conversation, or you know, she says, I'm like, hmm, wait, hold on, I'm going to write this down because it always makes sense at my punchline. So you don't even need to. You just, I mean, just watch the video <laughs> because these are lessons are very related. But I think anybody, just as I have gotten better as a person um, from these things, you too will get better from it. That's a long introduction. Let's get into the video, guys. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. Lesson number one. First lesson is to always advocate for myself and give myself grace. I learned this from the therapist that I had in 20, during the pandemic. Yeah, during the pandemic, 2020. Um, she would say, always give yourself grace like it doesn't matter what you're struggling with or what you're having difficulty with just give yourself grace first before you start saying anything just advocate for yourself right in in, in relationships and in communication with other people as much as you want to empathize with them should be like peace advocate for yourself and that was really part of that because i i can be a very agreeable person um, and what that means is that it's much easier for me to just you know agree with people understand them apologize and move on and without really acknowledging my own feelings and so it was important for me to learn to be good to begin to advocate for myself and advocate for myself is not just stop putting my foot down in conversations or in arguments um or even being less agreeable per se it's just paying attention to myself and my needs and my values first and saying okay you know what these are the things that I need to do in this situation that feeds me and that feeds who I want to be and you know make sure that I use those my values and my needs as like a benchmark before letting people override it and to give myself grace so even when I fail even when I get anxious even when you know things just do not, do not go the way I want them to go like give yourself grace and that's why become one of my life principles if I may just give myself grace I won't always get it right I won't always be awesome i would sometimes fail i would sometimes be anxious i would sometimes be playing with self-doubt i would sometimes have imposter syndrome i would sometimes hurt people i would sometimes get, allow myself to get hurt in all of this peace gives herself grace grace to be human grace to feel grace to hurt grace to experience joy grace to be Lesson number two is that everybody tells themselves a story about everything. Everybody tells themselves a story about everything. Um, 
and this, this, is, this is probably my favorite technical, but it's like two people can experience the same thing but experience differently. Two people can watch a show and they'll get two different messages or have different perspectives about our show. Two people can be in a car ride and would speak about that car ride very differently. In every experience, even if you're having it with someone else, everybody will tell themselves a different story because we're all different. Our perspective, our experiences, our genes, the things that make us up are all different. And so those things influence how we tell ourselves a story about everything. And so it's important to know that people's perspective will sometimes differ from yours, even when you feel like, oh, it should have been the same thing. And I think everything about this as well. And so you need to be able to acknowledge the other person without feeling like one person is right or one person is to blame. And just know that two things can coexist, that my story and your story can coexist. Sometimes people are just fact factually wrong. And it's okay to tell them that, but sometimes it's just us having different perspectives and learning, for it, especially in relationships, that um, somebody will say something and say, oh, this is how I see A, and you say, but this is how I felt about B. And knowing that you just need to be able to acknowledge each other's perspectives and feelings and thoughts and find a common ground to be able to move forward ahead of that without blaming anybody or feeling like one person has to be on their mind in on their own experiences and feelings before we can actually move forward with it. Omed needs are sometimes the biggest reason for conflict. Somebody being mad at you in a relationship or your friend saying something passive aggressively is most times less about what you did and what you don't do and more about an omed need that you're feeling. It could just be that they're feeling lonely or they're not feeling head or um, they're not feeling appreciated and that need to feel head to feel loved to feel appreciated to feel not taken for granted those things would then come up as um as expressions in different ways as them being mad about you not putting water in the fridge unnecessarily and just being mad that you know you didn't say good morning when, when you woke up and and those things is less about oh that you didn't say good morning just more that when they've been having an unmet need and what you want to do for people that you really care about your partners um, and your best friends or your friends generally people that you care about is to always find when you feel like there's a lot of conflicts and strife always find is there an unmet need is there something that fundamentally it's important to you that I'm not giving and how can I sort of redeem that finding fix it sometimes also it's not for you to fix it's for you to be able to recognize and for them to recognize um, for you to help them recognize and then because sometimes they need to be the ones to um, meet that need for themselves you can't be responsible for everybody's feelings you can't be responsible for people's lives um, but recognizing that for you and for them makes it much easier to move forward in relationship for staying away from things that trigger use a form of self-care <laughs> there are many ways to care for yourself but a really good way is to stay away from things that trigger you from people from places from situations anything that doesn't give you joy anything that just triggers you or necessarily anything that you know brings unresolved feelings or terrible feelings from you staying away from it can be a form of self-care there are some things that you have to fix face head on but there's some more things that's just like yeah this person always gives me bad vibes but doing this particular kind of work always makes me feel a certain way and i'm just going to stay away from it so know when it's not toxic and when it's just self-care but i'm not saying i've avoid issues or saying hey when something or some situation doesn't serve you you don't have to try too hard to fix it just stay away five problems in a system are initiated and maintained by all parties in a system it's a dynamic right problems in a system are initiated and maintained by the parties in a system everything that happens between a in a system is everybody in that system responsible anything that happens in a relationship everybody in that relationship is responsible anything that happens in a friendship everyone in that friendship is responsible anything that happens at work in your team everybody that in that team is responsible if something is a problem and um, it's because one or two one person is doing this and another person is doing that thing for it to come back different people have to also impute together so it's always saying that hey what we're going through right now it's a factor of all of us. It's a factor of two of us. How do we fix it together? It's not one person's responsibility to fix anything. It's everybody in that system's responsibility to fix it together. To say, okay, yeah, maybe one person started it, but the other person failed it. Maybe one person started it, another person continued it. It doesn't matter who started it. We're all responsible because we're in that system together and we have to maintain it together. And that makes life easier. Six, anxiety can be a way to prepare yourself. And can also be a superpower. My therapist calls it, anxiety is papa that doesn't that doesn't undermine it at least for me right it's just saying that when you get anxious um, usually what happens is that you start overthinking you start worrying start writing you start all the ways that something can go wrong and said the ability to be able to see all the things that can go wrong and think five steps ahead to say oh my god this thing could these are all the ways that it could fail these are all the ways that I could get rejected just although when you're able to see that far ahead you're also by default able to 
plan that much ahead because if you can say oh um something can go wrong because of this this and this and i'm just about to you can also in that same way work on yourself and work on your mind it's okay if this goes wrong what can i do what's my plan b if this goes wrong what can i do what's my plan b what's my plan c what's my plan d i can have plan a to z if you need to and not everybody can do that because some people will just go blindly and say yes let's try and they're not prepared but the fact that you can get answers and you can see all the ways can go wrong that's a super power that you can leverage you can say okay you know what i acknowledge which is always the first step i acknowledge that i'm anxious and i'm worried about this thing I'm worried about this situation, I'm worried about this project, I'm worried about this person, and I'm worried about this relationship. I acknowledge this, and these are all the ways I think it can go wrong, and it's scary, but for instance, if this actually goes wrong, is that something I can fix? And what can I do to fix it? What's my plan B, my plan C, my plan D? And something that I can't fix and I can't control, can I acknowledge that this thing is, within, is not within my control, and just, you know, be able to do it afraid as well? I know that even for anybody else who wasn't anxious, they still won't be able to control it because that's just what it is in life. And, you know, that just really helps me a lot because now I think oh I'm anxious about this and why am I anxious oh okay I think that this is why we feel okay can I do something about it if I can't you know what yes yeah, out of my control every single thing should be based on your value system one of the key things that I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to do my therapist and my life coach to different people again is you know just reiterating I, I did this work before I, I did a video I think in 2020 or 2019 about my core values and personal core values and I'll link it up there you should watch that video um, and I, I, every year I go back oh, every couple of months I go back to my core values the seven of them and I say okay does this still matter to me does it still matter to me why does it matter to me um, and I did that before even long before I started therapy and then going back to therapy I'm like oh every single thing always happens for your core values right like you need to pay attention to your value system um, and your value system should be the benchmark it should be the blueprint of everything that you do it should be a blueprint of the work that you take the opportunities that you say yes to it should be the blueprint of the relationships that you build and the, and the people that you get involved with it should be a blueprint of the impact that you try to create everything should be based on your value system if it doesn't align with your values then there's something wrong and that has just really helped me stay grounded because when i'm thinking about what to do and what not to do i can easily ask myself does this thing align with my values? Is the, does it um, feed my values or does it go against my values? If it goes against my values, it's an easy no, you know? Um, and if it says yes to my values and it works and I have the bandwidth for it, then that makes sense. And my values are kind of broad from self-awareness to growth, to impact, to money, to rest, to relationships. It covers different areas. And so when something's able to take this, I know there's something I should be able to do. So just that value system has been very key to just like, help me really stay grounded another lesson is relationships matter um, and and this was for my life coach this is just saying you know what your work is great and your brand is great but I care mostly about you and one of the things that makes you you is your relationships your family your friends um, the people that are with you your closest people that's a very important part of who you are your social circle your network being your network and that has just really helped me to become even much more deliberate about relationships this year to so say now oh, yes there's community is important family is important friends are important community is important network is important because are the people that make you use and people that will speak for you when you're not in the room those are the people that will recommend those are the people that will support you those are the people that will be there for you when you're going through hard times so relationships matter and at the core of everything you want to do you want to make sure that the relationships that matter most to you um that you are building them that you are nurturing them and that you are just you know being with the right people and those people also are aligned with your values right and those people are very also very aligned with your values and then um, another lesson is you can control others just yourself I, so yes all problems in the system and she's telling me about parts in the system and all of that stuff and everybody's story everybody has a story about everything and they can be most likely different from yours yes but at the end of the day the only reaction and only action and the only change you can control is you right that's something you have total control over you can't control not your mother not your father not your lover not your best friend not your colleague not your ceo the only person's action and values you can control is you that's why it's very important step one to always advocate for yourself and give yourself grace and walk from the place of your values and um, when because when those things are there you are more grounded to be able to face 
issues of life and you're more grounded to be able to deal with differing value system and different beliefs and conversation from other people because you are grounded in your own space so just always keep in mind that yeah i would like keep this person change but i can't even control them changing and so i would focus on what is within my control which is me and how i approach this conversation and how i approach this relationship and how, how i approach this this thing that's going on and how i react to it as well that i can control and that can, would, can have it, it might not have a 360 effect but it will have an effect on it and even if when i then react and i then approach it the person doesn't respond in a way that will work i will still just keep doing what i can do or just leave because staying away from things that trigger you self-care um and so it's less about you change you change now okay how can i react to this because when i do something is it things like um I forgot what my therapist calls it but it's like a secular motion when you do something people will react to that in, in a certain way if you react with red they'll probably react to red if you react with blue they probably will be like oh, okay be if you if you a bit calmer maybe you react to yellow instead of like an anger red and so it's less about oh this is what i want person to do and okay maybe if i approach it differently maybe it will and i'll keep trying i'll keep trying if it doesn't if it doesn't then staying away from things that trigger you self-care but just learn to control yourself and finally right and this is the bonus point this is something I learned recently. He said our genes, and this is from Grace Anatomy, Mary did Grey, but I think it fits into what I'm talking about. It's just like awesome lessons that's helped me. Our genes, which we inherit from our parents, determine who we are biologically. They are our blueprint. Everything from our eye color to our height, even our laugh, but also our diseases, asthma, diabetes, cancers. But who we are at our core goes way beyond our genes. Who you really are is a result of many, many things. How you deal with fear, who you surround yourself with and how you show up when it matters. Meredith Grey, Grey's Anatomy, season eight, episode 13. Your gene is something you can control. It has a lot to do with who you are, your diseases, your health, your eye color, your height, your laugh, your gesticulations, but who you really are, your personality, your character, your value system. It's not really about your genes, it's about you. It's about many things. It's about how you do with fear and how courageous or not you are and how vulnerable you have allowed yourself to be. It's about who you surround yourself with. It's about the things that you consume. It's about what you read. It's about what you watch. It's about where you go. It's about what you experience. It's about how you show up when it really matters. All of those things are what really make your personality and what makes really you. And those are the things that you can control. And so if you decide who you want to be, you can actually create, as against just discovering it, you can say, hey, this is who I want to be and I will create them because that's what you can control. You can create who you want to be. You, life is less of a discovering journey and more of a creation journey. You can create it. You can say, okay, I want to have this experience because when I have them, they improve my knowledge about this thing, I improve my skill sets and I have access to this network and I have access to this opportunity. And you can learn to be more courageous. You can learn to be more um, vulnerable. You can learn to love more. You can learn to experience more joy and give more joy and those things build your character and change your personality for the better. Yeah, it's, it's your core. It goes way beyond your genes. I hope these lessons have been beneficial to you. Um, and I hope you learned one or two things that you can always refer back to if you ever feel unsure or if you just need a reminder or if you just need something to help you stay grounded. Learn to always have good for yourself and give yourself grace. Remember that everybody tells a story about every different thing and the two things can coexist and it's less about blaming someone and undermining other people's feelings and just being able to acknowledge their own perspective remember that a lot of conflict is usually because of what unmet needs find it fix it and it's not always on you to fix but sometimes it's left for you to be able to find help people discover what their unmet needs are and create that room Know that sometimes self-care is being able to stay away from things that trigger you. Know that problems in a system are initiated and maintained by all parties in a system. It's not one person's problem to fix, it's everybody. Know that you can't control others, just yourself. And to focus on the things that you can control. Know that anxiety can be a superpower and a way for people to prepare yourself. So when you worry and you think all the ways can go wrong, also think about all the ways that you can mitigate that and you know use that as a superpower. Acknowledge it and then plan. Know that relationships matter a lot. Make sure that everything flows from your value system first. If it aligns with your values, it's a good idea. If it doesn't align with your values, then why are you doing it anyway? And finally, even though a lot of the things that we are biologically comes from our genes and our parents, a lot of who you are, your core, your essence, your personality, your character, it's much more than your genes. It's about your experiences, 
It's about your knowledge. It's about you showing up. It's about your people who you surround yourself with. And those are things that you can control and create and curate. So go ahead and be your best version. Peace.